That's all right. I like the way that sounds. I like that. Let everything that has breath grow up. We must break our Abba. What a great privilege. What a great privilege he grants on to us as a nation. People that's dysfunctional, yet he grants us that great savah, the commands from his bosom. That's all right, yeah. It was a time when people were not as educated as we are today. And so they had a simple, aggressive compassion and desire to hear Torah. And when there was a new word that would come unto them, what I mean by a new word, a word that would refresh. The teaching, that's why most of those men that were messengers, many of them were not equipped to read and write. They understood the stories that had come through the generational lines of our forefathers. And what that would do when they would hear that from those that had the ability to take one or two and express the depths of that, you will find the great rejoicing. And they will become euphoric because of what Yah speaks unto them. And their hearts will rejoice with great fatness. And that's why they could sing for hours and dance and then they had the ability to wait on the messenger for him to get up in all of his ignorance. They were not keen on his enunciation of words and his grammatic flow. They would judge that man and they knew that he was sincere. They knew that his wisdom was sound and the beauty that emanated from him. What he said was just because he was a justified man by Yah. And they would see that and that would give them great strength of encouragement to battle the hardship, the difficulties, of that time, that era, and what was laid on them, they could do it. Now this is a soft cream puff generation. It lacks MySpace and YouTube and whatever the other one is, they got so many. Facebook. And that's what they enjoy. They don't enjoy the Torah today. I'm talking about young and old. And silly old men and silly old women. It is the truth, old woman. I speak the truth. And I lie not to you. I want to teach today with all emphasis upon one word. And the word is afflict. Now, don't judge my grammatics if I say afflicted. I know how to properly enunciate the word, all right? But it is a flick. We may understand the great rewards and the great benefits of being a flick. We must understand what Torah says precisely. We must read from what Torah expressed on this superlative. What it reflects, what it denotes, why, the reason why. That one's mind mentally and spiritually uh, can be so distressed beyond the paramounts of one having the ability uh, to set the matter in order that it calls, because one is afflicted, it causes afflictions to rise in the mind and in the body of that individual that one has great distress and grief of mind. When one is afflicted, 
The results of that is the afflictions. When Yah afflicts one, when he sees the great need of that to Anna, to bring them down, to humble them, and to cause them to realize one important factor, that he is. There is no other one. He is Yisrael. And there is none other like him. And so his strength, his ability to afflict or anna, to humble Yisrael. To cause our hearts to bow down and to bend before him. That this distress is a continuous affliction of distress. And that it caused us uh, to suffer in our minds, our ruach, that it is irreparable. And there is only one that can repair. And he is the great I am. He is almighty young. And to understand the depth of that, I, I want to begin in the book of Tehillim. As I said, this is a very intimate book, the writing of David. And in this mashal, or this great wisdom of a parable, David wants to give this great toda unto Omariya for all of his excellence, his great power, his great consideration, his great kindness, and above all of that for all of his gamu'al, his great benefits. So it begins here in this narrate to Helium Psalms 116. I want to read verse 1 and 2 and I'll drop down to where I want to from there. Let's be attentive to, to Helium. 116 verse 1. He says unto the Abba, I love you, Ahab, Ahab, you with great compassion. I love Yahweh, why? Because he has shemach. He has heard, he has heard my voice. He has heard the substance of what I am and who I am. He has heard my call, my cry, my passion, my heart's pain and agony. He has heard my voice and he has also bent his ear, shemach, my great supplication, my travailing. My cries in the wee hours when no one knows that I'm crying. My great agony of heart when I seek the face of my Abba. That I know that his ozin, his ear is bowed down to me uh, to hear my cry. Now he is crying unto Yah because uh, he understands the essentials of Yah. And one is his great compassion for his nation, his people. We don't understand that. That's why there is no kara, kara to cry, to animate, and to move with a loudness of speech. We can talk folly and laugh and act like a jackass, can't we? He says unto Yah, because you, O Maria, you have inclined, you have not done. You have bit your ear over closely. You have given your attention attentively unto me. You have, yeah. You have inclined your ear to me. Of all men, you have listened to my cries. You have listened to my supplication, my compassion, my desire, which has been established by the power of the rule of Torah. He says, therefore, will I... I will utter a sound that it will cause the ears of others that hear, that it will penetrate the veneer of their flesh and dig down to the depths of their nefesh. He says, I will kara, I will cry, I will sing, I will show my appreciation unto you. He says, Upon you, Yah, as long as I live, as long as I have life. As long as I have understanding. I wanted to set the cornerstone here. Why? Because when we can appreciate what Yah has done, 
there is a tremendous trove of Toda, Yoda, and appreciation unto him. We can appreciate how he corrects us. We will love him more. That's why I said I'll tell you what the next verse is. I want you to look at verse 10 of the same chapter. And we all do this. He says, I believe. Oh man. I have confirmed in me. I have faith in what I say. I have confidence in what I say. Listen to him now. He says, uh, I believed. So what I believe, you are therefore our Amma. I spoke it. We do that. What we think we know is right. We speak it, don't we? He says, I believed. And so I spoke what I believed. He said, I uttered it. Our Amma, it came out loud. I wanted it to be heard. He says, when I did that, he says, I was rabba, I was greatly afflicted. The ana, the, I was afflicted by yeah, the affliction. I was greatly afflicted. Why? Why was he afflicted? The next verse tell us. He says, I said in my chafaz, in my ignorance, in my hurry, in my terrified state of mind, he said, I said in my haste, all men are liars. Everyone is wicked. Come on, Yisrael. They're all wrong. He said, I said in my haste that they all are liars, that they all are wicked. We, we don't read this book. And we do that in our haste. We will say, they are not right. They are not right. But you're right. But you're right. I said in my haste, uh, he was afflicted. Now that all men uh, are, they are liars, they are khazab, they are vain. They don't love Yah, they are not sincere. They have no compassion for Yah, we talk like that. They are not right, but you're right. So I said in my heart, in my haste, in my mind, I spoke it. I believe what I spoke. I believe what I spoke. I spoke wrong against him, but I believe what I spoke. You were wrong. I spoke wrong against her and against them, but the lie of your own wickedness made you believe. You were right. Oh, I got it covered. That's why he told you in the beginning how much he loved him. He could appreciate his love for what you have done for me. How you have watched over me. What you have done. I read it again. I believed. Therefore have I spoken. What did you speak? Well I would tell you. He said I was greatly. I was rabba. Much abundantly. He said I was afflicted. I was ana. The afflictions rose. The mental pressure. The, the, the depression. The, the suffering of that great thing that fell upon me. And I said in my haste, I said because I believe what I said, and this is what I believe I said was right, because I said it, then it's got to be right. Because I said it, it's got to be right. What is the constitution of your strength? He said, I said in my haste, all men are liars. Does it say that in your rendition? Does it say that that's what he said? All men are liars. They are all wrong. There is no one right. There is no one that loves Yah but me. There is no one that has the true sense of wisdom but me. That all men are kazab. They're vain. They're empty. They're not sincere. They're not pure. They have been proven to be liars. How could you call all men liars when you have not proven them to be liars? So that's what he said, that they're all wicked. They're all wrong. They don't care. They have no compassion. He says, what shall I render? You see, he realized when he said that. He says to Yah, what shall I render unto you, Yah, for all your great gemul, your great gifts and benefits toward me. That's why he fell before Yah to appreciate all that he had done, he could express the gravity of his love. When I spoke out of term, 
But I said things that were not according to Torah discipline. My mind was not disciplined. I want to establish that benefit thing for a moment. The Yamul, all right? I, I will stay on the afflict, but I must establish that. His heart was so indicted, it was so moved, it was so convinced. Why? Because he loved the statues of Yah's Torah. I said in my haste, we all have gone that way, that all men are liars. He is not right. He doesn't know Yah. What makes you know Yah? What, what is the signed seal of your approval? Come on, son. Come on, woman. Where's your beauty as a daughter of Tizayon? Where's your strength, man, as a strong man of Yisrael? Where's the defense of your heart? Where is it? And we find ourselves in our own haste. So I said in my haste that all men are liars. That they all are wrong. They all are kasad. They're vain. They're empty. They have not the essence of Yah. No strength of character. No truth in them. I ask you, my friend, what is the constitution of your truth? What makes your truth right? What makes your wisdom more bountiful than anyone's else? What shall I give to Yah for all of his benefits toward me? What do we give to Yah for all of his benefits? His judgment, his correction. I want to Read from the heart of David, a heart that was nurtured in Torah by the statutes, the commands of Yah. He says here in Tehillim Sons, chapter 68. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says here, verse 18, You almighty Yah, you have ascended on high. You have led the captive captivity. Or the captivity of the captive. Though thou hast received gifts for men. Yea. For the rebellion is also that Yah might dwell among them. And then he says with such a profound statement of his heart. He says blessed is. Blessed be Barak Yah. Who daily. Who daily. Who daily, see, that's why he was reminded uh, of his words that he spoke. Who daily loadeth us uh, with benefits. Uh, not, not just once in a season, but daily he loads us with benefits. Daily he loads us with his kindness, his love, uh, his compassion, uh, his truth. Uh, he says, daily he loads us. Tome, he calls us to be full. He calls our minds to be full with appreciation. And with all that he grants unto us daily, now he loads us. He sets upon high. And we that were captive in the captivity of our own sin and the bondage of our own words that we believe, he loads us daily with his benefits. Continuously with life and breath and strength. He says, even of our Yahshua, even of our salvation, he loads us continuously daily with all of his benefits. That's what thy weed said. He said, I said, and my haste men were liars. But what do I render unto Yah for all of his benefits? Because I was afflicted for my folly and my ignorance and my sin and the nature in which I operate. And we don't think like that what do we give Yah for all of his benefits what do we render unto him we can't yada we don't praise him there is no excitement for him there is no great love for him so that we began to uh, concerning his great fervor of love for Yah you can say you love him all you want to but that doesn't carry any weight it's because there's a great compassion to keep his commands, his mitzvah, and your heart is indicted. You understand that the heart of David was indicted? 
That's why he realized I said in my haste, I judge your people. I judge you, yeah. I judge your correction. That all men are liars. They're not liars. That everyone is vain. They're not all kazab. You are the one that's, that's vain. If they have not the nurturing of your strength, you're the one that possess not the nurturing of your strength. Hallelujah. I speak to our Achim, I speak to the Zachim, I speak to the Hotim, the Ima, I speak to you all. The strength of a beautiful woman that when she's a wife, that when her man sits in the market, that everyone says, what a man you are to have a woman like that. And the world has corrupted your damnable, twisted minds. You can't appreciate the beauty of Torah. That's why collectively, no one wants to get together and talk Torah talk. Yeah. You get together and eat and laugh and see how. Yeah. I know it's the truth, mama. We don't want that. We like folly. We like foolishness. The benefits of Yah. What will you render unto him for all of his benefits? He also continues in this process into helium 100. Three in verse one, he says, "Barak, my nephesh, bow down, your man power, bow down." He said, "Barak, ya, oh, oh, my nephesh, and all that is within me, I want to extol his Kador's name." Do you do that? You got a measure of folly in you. You got strength of your own will in you. He says, but I will bow before Yah. I will barak him with all that is within me. Do we actually give Yah anything that he has benefited you? You are the beneficiaries uh, of what he has granted, breath and life. Uh, he said, everything that is in me, I want to barak Yah. He said, I want to lift him up. And then he said, I want to confess. I want to bless his kadosh name. The name that is set apart. Why? He said, bless, bless Yah. He said, all oh, my nephesh in verse 2, Psalms 103 verse 2. I want all of my living substance to, uh, to exalt, to esteem him. I want my actions, the activity of my limbs, uh, and the wealth of my life. That's what the nephesh is. It is the living power of a man or a woman, not something that is invisible. It is the whole of one. It is the living power of his Torah. It is the living power of your will, your pleasure, the precept. He's everything in me. I want to barak you. Oh, my nephesh. Why? He says, and above all things, man, and forget not, and forget not, do not, do not forget all his benefits and forget not the benefits of Yah that's why the old ones could get up in the morning rise up and sing the songs unto Zion because they were appreciative to be alive we don't do it men or women you flat out lie if you say you do you damn hypocrites that's why we can say things out of our mouths and not realize that the afflict of the afflictions, our minds are constantly oppressed. And we're worried about the wickedness of the world because our minds are an offense unto you. It is the short time. It is the short time. It is a man that has become an adversary of foe unto you. Short time. Short. S A W T A N. Short time. Forget not all of his benefits. Why do we forget them? Because we don't take time for Torah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He says this in the next verse. Who forgives? He forgives all of my, all of my iniquities. And he heals all of my holy, my diseases. Uh, I'm not talking about something whereby your body has the ability to function in a state. Our minds are disease. Our minds are not functional. Huh, because how can you, as Shaul says in Galusia, that the fruit of the Ruach, it begins with love. How can you say that you're not diseased when you don't sense love that flows from our bosom in our hearts? How can you sense that when our ponim, our countenance doesn't reflect the beauty of the light of Torah and the wisdom of Torah? Something is wrong in us. We have forgotten the benefits of Yah. And that's why we can say that they are wrong. They are not right. They are lawyers. 
but you're not a liar. You're sick. No, you don't get by with, here with me. I don't care who you are. Give a damn who you are. You can bring your mama. You can dig my mama out of the grave. She won't get by with me. And that's a fact. You can die and get up again out of the grave. You won't get by from this Torah. Because this is the only thing. You all can think what you want. This is the only thing that's going to cause us to rise up. We got to keep the testimonies of Yah and have the testimony of Yahshua in our bosom. We got to have that. He redeems our lives from destruction who crowned us with love kindness. He has crowned us with his love kindness and his hasit, his raham. Now, if one is crowned, can you see a king with the crown? Your daughters have your head covered. We can see their heads covering. So if a man has the crown of the love kindness of Yah and his great compassion, can't you see that on his poneim? If a man has this virola, unsophisticated look, cannot you tell that? You got to want to change that wickedness. And the only way you change that, you must remember the benefits of Yah. You must constantly remind yourself that today he awakened us. This evening is not promised. And that's why Thy Weed said, I will cry, I will cry, I will make a loud noise, I will sing unto Yah. He has forgiven you. He has forgiven you. He has forgiven you of all of your of in your iniquity. You will say in your haste who is right and who is wrong. You will not say in your haste, I'm a wicked man. You will not say in your haste, I'm a dumb jackass of a man. You will not say in your haste, my countenance does not represent the beauty of Yah's kindness and his great love kindness and his great compassion. You won't say that. But damn it, you can tell me I'm wrong. I don't want to talk like this today. I want to slow down. It's hard to do that. I forgive you and you forget the benefits. Your wickedness has met the same degree of damnation as my wickedness. Did you tell me that he's wrong? Even if my acts sin before me, I will not condemn him. Yeah. I'll tell you the story, our old brother Fred and I, we were ignorant. No Fred flat out lied. And after he lied, he just started crying. <laughs> and I sit there, I knew it was lying. I didn't say nothing, I just sit there. I didn't turn around and say, you damn liar. Oh Fred said that. I never I could tell you exactly where we were. Remember when we used to play ball behind Johnson C. Smith over there? We were coming around that curve. And the man pulled him over. That's where we were. Never forget. And he just started weeping and crying. <laughs> Pastor, that's the way he would come. Pastor. I didn't say nothing. I said to my friend, how can I condemn you? I will not. Because of the same sin you're guilty of, I'm guilty of every sin. And when I said that to that man, his tears were not just tears. They were tears of appreciation. And his weeping, the whole dynamics of his weeping changed. I said, my friend, I don't condemn you. Because if I condemn you, I must condemn me. I can't do it. I said, the next time you just tell the truth. And what are the results are? You bear them, all right? Yeah. Can't go around the door of you. I didn't tell that story for a long time until he was gone. Nobody knew. Hallelujah. We will not, I will, man. We will not forget the great benefits of Almighty Yah. What he has done. Can I show you another one? Hallelujah. 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 Here in Tehillim 116. No, I, I've read that one. That's not what I want. I want Jeremiah. 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 No, I want First Timothy. Uh, my heart just went to these when I came in here. First Timothy 6.2. And then I want Jeremiah. But First Timothy 6.2. I want you to hear this. First Timothy. Now, now uh, Shaul speaking unto Timotheus as 
the master being in the authority of headship as Yah through Yeshua HaMashiach. So in the midst of his youthfulness and ways that he was, he was not scholarly learned in, he writes unto this young brother to strengthen, to encourage. He says in 1 Timothy, yeah, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1, he said, Son, let every Ibrahim or every servant, Ebbets, he said, as are under the yoke, take the Torah and learn of Yah, learn of Yahshua, for his yoke is easy, and the burden of Yah is light. We are under the yoke of Yahshua. Yeah. So we are under that yoke. He says, count their own master worthy of all honors. Should we not give all honor to Yah? Yeah. Do we not give all honor to Yahshua HaMashiach? So we should count him that way. So if he, gave, if, he, if he calls you and he made you before your mother and your, your father here even conceived you, he knew you before they even knew you, then he calls us to be brothers of the same kindred spirit. You understand that? He says what? That the name of Yah and his teaching, the doctrine, the, the truth of Yah will not be spoken evil of. They say they love because, listen, if you say that among Israel, Yah, guess what another, you go to strangers and talk against them. I will never be littered the house of Yah among the wicked. I don't care how man does me, I will never go to the wicked and begin to desecrate and to destroy. I won't do that. You can't. So if you do it among Israel, you do it among the wicked. Them folks over there, that's how the wicked talk. Listen to what he says. He says, and they that have a believing master, Yoshua is our believing master. He believes the Torah because he is Torah. He is the representation of Torah. He represents all the fullness of Yah. He said, let them not despise them. Don't despise them. Don't have this hatred for them. He said, because... They are Yisraelite achim, but rather do them service. Why? Because they are faithful and they are the beloved. They are. He said they are also partakers of the benefit. They are partaker. I, I believe he may not have the strength and the wisdom you have and he has the authority to instruct you, yet he believes. He is partaker of those benefits as well he said these things you should teach and exalt now do you ever hear that being exalted and taught among us you don't even hear even even teachings that we're small here we have just a few of us that get up and labor that's what takes the old men, the zakin. You will know when they have wisdom in their eyes when they see. And, they, and their speech is not muttered. It is a clear speech. It's a strong speech. And they will talk on those things that they have labored to understand. And the wisdom of that will speak profoundly out of them. And they can show you the Torah revelation of that. Not from one scripture. Not from two. There must be a preponderance of evidence. You don't draw a case on one word or one statement. You must have a plethora of wisdom, of witnesses. You go get one verse and you're going to teach on that. How can you do that? Oh, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to preach. I'm going to holler. I know I won't use all the verses I have today because they're too many. It's already 1215. And I want to explain things. To you. So you can't do that. We should teach other benefits. The ark should stand in the midst even of the plaza and teach of the benefits of Yah and what is so beautiful of his benefits and that others will see at, at even those that are passing can hear. That's the how it is. Yeah. It's sad. It is very sad. You know how to be mean as hell. You know how to act mean. You know how to be cold. You know how to show your indifference. But he says these things teach and exalt. These things I want you to teach and exalt. Why? This is the reason why. What Jeremiah says, Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to read one verse. Yah says this, maybe three. He says this in Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah. 18. Hear this, Yisrael. 
when Yah commanded him to go down to the potter's house, we've heard that teaching, to see and to understand the craftness and the, and the great delicacy of the potter's hands. And so he says out of the utterance of Jeremiah's mouth, Jeremiah 18.10, he said, If you do, you assay, you perform, you fashion your mind to do ra, R-A-H, evil. Your conscience is evil, your actions are evil, your activities are evil. He says, in my sight, that I see it, in my sight, that it and that you or it, my nation that I shall build, Obey not my voice. If you don't obey my voice. He says, then I will repent of the tov. I will change, I will shoo. Of the tov wherewith I said, uh, I would benefit you. The benefits of the Torah, they will not benefit you. The Gemul, they will not benefit you. Yah says, I will change that. You will not benefit from what I've said. I will change that because you desire to do evil. You want to do evil. You don't want to labor and to study. You don't ought to be kind. You don't ought to be gentle. You segregate yourself. You do your own thing. You don't want to be a part of the body. I don't want my hand to say I don't need you. I need my hand. Just like we need one another, Yisrael. He says, now therefore go to, uh, and I want you to speak to the men of Yehuda. Not only them, uh, and to the inhabitants of Yerushalayim, uh, the whole house uh, of Yisrael, uh, saying, uh, this is what Yah says. He says, behold, uh, I began to study a message the other day, the hundreds of scriptures I have. And it's entitled, what Yah says, I will sin, I will do. You'll be surprised what he will do and what he will sin. We just read. We've been taught how to read. I teach you how to study. And if you watch how I present things, you will know how to study. And I spent one day, I think it was one day after labor, just on that. Last Shabbat or the Shabbat before last. I may not ever preach it. I may give the scriptures to one of the Achim and say, preach it. Hallelujah. Yes, says, I will frame. He says, I will. Uh, behold, I frame evil against you. This is Yah. He framed our minds to do evil. He framed our actions, our activities uh, to operate in evil. Why? Because uh, you have not uh, rejoiced uh, in the great benefits uh, of Yahshua HaMashiach. So he said, I will frame evil against you. That's why our minds uh, constantly ponder evil. We think evil. We do evil. We act in evil. Our activities are evil. We have forgotten the benefits of Yah. And the reason we have forgotten the benefits, we don't love him. We don't know what love is. We're just a pack of damn fools. That's why when Yah corrects us, we hate him. We see that among us in our, own, in, in our personal experience with others. Uh, they correct you. You get mad as a, you get mad as a, rabbit, a rabbit dog. You get upset. You correct a man that loves Yah. His mind has been uh, pruned and nurtured in wisdom. He will love you. He will care for you. Uh, he will embrace you. Uh, his face will shine like light. Uh, and you will see that uh, he emboldens you because of his love is great. Uh, and you know that his love is great. You correct a damn fool, you get a blot. Uh, your mind will begin to ponder and wonder, well, should I have done that? Uh? Yeah. You don't want to hear men talk like me. You want to hear these pacifists. Well, it's all right. Well, reak doesn't mean that. I mean every word I says, may it damn you. Yah says, I will frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Not for you, uh, but against you. Why? Because you have not embraced my benefits. The gemul of Yah, his gifts, his kindness, his judgment, his statutes. He says, I will do that. He said, and I will return you now, everyone. He says, I want you to return everyone from his evil ways. He did not say, he said, he makes that personally, doesn't it? He did not say as a nation, he said, everyone to turn from his evil ways. You turn from your evil ways. You look at your evil ways. If you judge yourself, you will have no need of anyone to judge you. And everyone turn from his evil ways. You turn from her evil ways and your evil ways. You are the one that's evil, you're the one that's the sick dog. 
turn from your evil ways. Turn from your, from his evil way and make your ways and your doings. You make them right with Yah. And they said, and they said, there is no, there is no, no take vow. There is no take vow. That's what they said. There is no take vow. But we will walk after our own devices. We're going to do what we want to do. No one's going to tell me because we've forgotten Yah's benefit. You walk in the same device that a, a device. I, I understand what the word device means. It is the concept, a purpose. It is something that is designed that you are drawn to and allured to, and it's, it's almost like a vice grip. It ties you in. Is, that's why the word, that, that's why the suffix is vice, V-I-C. And a vice is what tightens down on you and keep you under that bondage. And so your own lies and your own evil, they vice upon your mind, your spirit, and they vice down, they get tighter and tighter, and you can't get from under that. You get something vice down and clamped down right, you, you don't get it up. You don't get from under that. And then the agony of your own wickedness becomes so heated and you froth at your mouth. It becomes, your mind becomes so seared. Your conscience becomes so seared. And it becomes so seared, you can't get from under it. And that's just a fact, Yisraeli. I want someone to talk to me like this. I want someone to tell me the truth. Because you're going to die. I want the truth. I, I don't want to pretend. I don't want to be a damn hypocrite. I don't want to be false. I don't want to be phony. I don't want to have this old false superficial thing we call love uh, that it's not genuine, that it's not true. Uh, I want you to sense my love. I want you to sense kindness. Uh, I want you to sense my compassion and to sense my care. We don't give a damn about Yisraya. Yeah. You care about folly though. We can sit up all night with folly. We can laugh and clown all day. You see, got those that are the same nurturing you are. And the first thing y'all will do is like, ha, 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 ha. He says, and we, we will, not we might, we will, will, everyone do the imagination of their own. See, who owns your heart? Your heart is evil. Of their own evil heart. The heart is deceitful. This is the same man in the third chapter. Say, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Whose heart is he talking about? My heart? You judging my heart from your wicked heart? No, I judge your heart by this. I judge your heart by this, so I speak this and I preach this, and your heart can't bear this. So your heart gets mad, your heart gets upset because it can't bear this. Uh, this is what judge your heart. This is what judge your will. Uh, this book here, your sure opens you up. We will do the things that are abominable and evil in our own hearts. Our hearts have been nurtured by evil and corruption. Our defiance and the reason why we have forgotten the benefits of Yah. We have forgotten his great gemul, the gift. We don't think about Yahshua HaMashiach. We've forgotten that most precious gift. For all, all have sinned. Present, past, tense, and all. We've come short. We have not fallen. Of the great esteem, the great kabut of Yah, all have sinned. All have sinned. And we have fallen short. And as I believed, I said it. I speak my mind. Your mind is wicked. Your mind is corrupt. Yahshua commands us, let the same mind that was in him be in us. Your mind uh, is wicked. I can look at you and tell you what your mind is about. This is not about Yah. Your mind is unclean, but the mind of Yahshua is right. This hyperbole, we pretend that we got something right. You don't have nothing right. Oh, I read that. It doesn't mean a damn thing. We must assa, we must do. It's not about you reading and hearing. We must do. We must fashion ourselves accordingly. That's why the men must fashion themselves according to Torah. And the daughters of Tezayan, you must submit yourself and obey. You quit rising up. Women could understand the beautiful wife she had years to her husband's life. 
I want to interpose something. I was reading an article. I was somewhat, if I must use the word moved by it, there was this preacher in Ohio. He and his wife, they had celebrated their 50th anniversary last June. I don't read stuff like this, but that, I read it. And some years ago, he had a leonce with a woman. He and his wife had labored there in that work. They had what they call all kinds of ministry, help, food, banks, and all of that. And so the man, he, he goes to his wife, he gets his children. He had to have some sense of conviction. And he confessed his sin to them. And so the Jezebel wife, she says to that man, no, you're going to confess that before everyone. That was enough. Everyone didn't need to know that. Everyone didn't need to do it. No. There are things everyone doesn't need to know. It's not their damn business. There are things you don't say nothing about it. There are things I know I would never say anything about it. And I certainly wouldn't tell you. Because you're going to tell someone else. So she persists that this man gets up. Last Sunday he gets up before the whole congregation after service was over. And he confessed what he had done. You must understand, I, I, I just don't see the action of the man. I see something greater than that. I really, my heart was, my heart was definitely stricken by this. So the man had to have some sense of wanting to do right. If he brings his wife and his children, tell them of his deeds, he could have went to his grave that way. No one would have known. But he had some decency. I respect that. But this Jezebel spirit tells him, you're going to tell everyone. You're wrong, woman. And because he didn't have the headship of Yoshua, he obeys. She would have probably began to spread that. And the man, he was in his 70s. Nice, strong-looking man. He got up before those people. Now, they all have sin in that whole house he was in. He confessed. And the man's heart was so broken. Once, as soon as he confessed, he dropped dead. That wicked Jezebel killed that man. That Jezebel killed him. Like her sins are of any less degree than what he did. None. She killed that man. And I don't get emotional about too many things, but I, you know, I looked at him, and I could just look at the man's countenance and tell he was a decent, he was, a, he was an honest man. There are folks that don't know y'all, they're honest men. And I could see that. I, my heart was, I felt so sorry as though that he was in some relationship of mine or some kinsmanship to the degree that we were friends. I really felt bad for him. He had a heart attack right there. After he confessed, they said that some of the people said, I still love you. Said the man dropped his knees right there. He had a massive heart attack, killed him. That this Jezebel put that on him. You going to tell everyone. Why? You don't have to tell everyone. For what? For them to talk. You don't have to tell everything. That's why you shut your mouth. You don't, tell, you don't have to tell no one your business. It's not their business. Any time you find a Jezebel or if every man wants to know that you better get away from him. Uh, I don't ask no man no questions. I don't give a damn what he has done. You just walk right when you're with me. I don't care what he has done. That's not an issue to me. I don't care what his degree of sin has been. Or what he has done. Now let's walk right. You, 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 you walk with me, you go, uh, roll up now. 
You can't walk like that with me, man. I don't need you to tell me nothing. And this woman made this man confess before all. Now, why didn't she get up and confess her self-righteousness? Why not? And he died. That's sad. That's sad. We better doubt our sins. And that's a fact. I, I want to proceed here a little bit, Yisrael. We don't realize that how corrupt we are. And what things we do that are so against what Yah commands us not to do. We don't realize that. We got this corrupt affection for the world and the things of the world, this passion for that which is so vile and so wicked. We got that in our hearts, Yisrael. And what that does, it calls this great fervor of intimacy or this great fervor of intimacy uh, to, 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 to form against Yah. That when we hear any kind of correction, we get upset. We get mad. There's one that writes, Yaqub, book of James, he speaks to us here in James chapter 4 verse 7. I want us to hear this carefully. When we submit, he tells us to afflict, bow down to, and not. That's what the word submit means. That's why when he says, wife, submit to your husband, he means bow down. Don't allow your arrogance to stand up against him. Just be quiet. So he tells us here in Yaakob, James 4, 7, uh, he says, submit yourselves, therefore, to Yah. That's how we should do it. Submit ourselves unto Yah. And then he tells us, he used the word shotan. He says resist. And that means as a, a, as a foe of uh, adversity, you, you are adversary to one, you resist. You fight against Hashatan as your enemy. He said, resist, and you must fight the fight of Imuna. He said, resist Hashatan. And he shall flee. That's all we have to do. We submit unto the instructions of Torah and just resist, fight against the powers of darkness. Our minds are nachash, the spirit that makes us rise up against Torah and pursue our own corrupt ways. Just resist that. Submit unto what Torah commands. Resist that and you will find your mind free and at liberty. He said, in the powers that be, they will flee. Then he commands us to get close. Draw near. Draw close to Yah. And he will reciprocate that. He will draw close to you. We're not drawing close to Yah, Yisrael. We don't have time for him. We don't treasure the time we spend with him. We don't treasure the Shabbat. We don't treasure kids iman we treasure walmart we treasure dollar mart we treasure the flea market we flare treasure myspace and youtube and all of that we spend so much time on things like that that is fruitless but we don't treasure young we don't treasure no relationship with him he says draw near to him and then he tells you to cleanse your hands have you cleansed your own wicked, filthy, dirty hands? He commands us to go down to the fullers. Zachin taught that. To the cleanser. And let him wash and cleanse you. He calls us sinners. And then we must tahor, purify our living, our hearts. How do we know we have a right heart? Because we love Yah with all of it, we obey His command, and we love our neighbors. We got to be able to express love. It's not some segregation. We must condemn ourselves for the for the fraudulent activities that we call love and the superficiality of our actions. That we know it's not love. He tells us to purify your hearts. He said, "You're double-minded." That's why you are unstable in all of your ways. Uh, you love me today and you get mad the next hour. I say something to you, rise up. If I ask you a question, you, you respond with meanness. Something is wrong with you, man. Come on, woman, something is wrong with you. 
You're sick in your mind. You're not right with God. You better get it right. We love y'all with everything. We love our friends, our neighbors as ourselves. You got to love them. He did not tell you to love your wife or your sons or your children more than you love anyone. He says love them like you love you. Love is not segregated or prejudiced like that. You love your children just like you love his children. You protect his children just like you did his. You protect your Ahot just like you, your Ishaw, just like you protect his Ishaw. You're not going to touch his Ishaw no more. You're going to touch his Ishaw. You're not going to touch her Ishaw no more. You're going to touch someone else's. You don't touch them in your mind. You don't touch them in your thought. Your mind's in there. You need to cleanse yourself of your, of your filthy heart. But you tell me I'm not right. Tell me how right are you, please? He calls us double-minded. Then he says this in verse 9, Yaakov. He says, be afflicted. He says, I want you to be anah. I want the distress of even those matters and those circumstances that trouble you so. You can't sit still. Be afflicted. Okay, be afflicted. How about that? Be afflicted. Be afflicted. That the severity of those circumstances, your attitude, it afflict you so that you, you're so, it's a suffering in your mind, your ruach, and your, and your love, that you, you're not satisfied. You can't sleep well. You can't eat well. And that wouldn't bother some of us anyway. We need not to eat so much at times. I'm in the front of the line on that one, all right? I can speak to me like that. Hallelujah. So he commands us to afflict. To afflict. Be afflict. He says that I want you to mourn. What, what, that, that's not even a part of our vernacular today. He says and mourn. And I want you to cry to weep. He says let your life to be turned into mourning. We love to, we love to laugh, don't we? Sure we do. He says and your joy, I want it to be heaviness. To be, I want you to be downcast. I want you to see the sorrow of all the shame you have done unto Almighty Yah. And then he tells us again to Allah. He says, humble yourself in the sight of Yah. See, we're not doing that. We want to flick. Humble ourselves in the sight of Yah and he will lift you up. See, it is his gemul, his benefits that lifts us up. It is his benefits that lifts us up. We are the salt of the earth, and the salt, if it has lost its uh, fra fragrance or its nice taste, it is tough for nothing. It is best to be thrown out and trodden on the foot. We are a city that sit upon a hill, that are light. What light? The light of Torah cannot be hidden. And we are cold and wicked as they come. I'm talking about the people of Yah. We're cold with each other. Something is sick in your damn mind. When we are cold with Yisrael, yeah, but we're kind to the damn world. We smile with them. We treat them nice. And we treat Yisrael yeah, like a bull or a pack of hogs dung. I would say the other word now. That's how we treat them. You don't go out there and say the world is so wicked. They're that. But you would call me wicked. Damn fool. I don't care who you are. That's what the book says. That's why we need strong men. I'm not going to stop with these older men. I can take a verse or two and articulate. When you're mean as hell and you're stubborn and rebellious, you will never be able to do it. You got to judge yourself like you judge others. You judge yourself with more severity than you judge others. I won't judge you like I judge me. I won't, I won't even ask you to do what I do. This man here, I appreciate how he helps me. I don't ask him to do what I do, but I ask him to. And I will show him because I appreciate him. I will do three times as much as you do. And I don't have to say anything about it. And I will embrace him and say, Toda, my friend, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Because it's better doing three quarters than doing the whole load. Ah, that helped me so much. I don't mind doing the digging. This is how we put him out. Hallelujah. I don't mind. I don't. That's how we appreciate each other. We are Yisrael. 
Well, my friend, you're partial, Ray. I, I, I am partial. I am. I favor only the people of Yah. I have opportunity to do right unto all men, but especially you do right unto Yisra'ya. Be kind to them. You're going to be in trouble. Never forget the man who sold us this land. I will say it the way he said it. I don't give a damn what you think. There was an old Caucasian woman here during the 50s that owned the land and this land that we're on. They were wealthy, he said. The woman knew the conditions of the 60s whereby white people and black people. It was the whites that despised the blacks. The Negroes, in most senses, would embrace Caucasians, bring them in in their fellowship. They would not do them wrong. That's just a fact. I've seen it too many times in my lifetime. I don't give a damn what you say. And so this old white woman that owned this land, the Caucasian woman, she knew she could not integrate blacks and whites together. And these were her words. She said this, quote, he said, this is what that old white woman said. If I do right by the colored folks, the black folks, we weren't using black back then when that man bought this land. If I do right by the colored folks, I believe God will help me and see me through. And she sold all the land to the people of the diaspora on this side to, to prevent any kind of ruckus. She sold the Caucasians the land on the other side over here to keep down any kind of ruckus or anything like that. That was a wise move. She had to. It was a wise move. She had to. And if you know that you do right by the people of Yah, those that are afflicted, even to the dull or the poor or the only, uh, those that are poor, we are people that's poor and afflicted. We don't have nothing. You will never possess anything. And you know your neighbor here. We're all poor here. Yes. Well, I will have my order that you will have the same thing you have here. Nothing. Uh, because when you die, you're not taking anything with you. Yes. You have nothing. Yes. Fact of the matter. Yes. And she sold that man this land here. And y'all kept it in reserve uh, until the day that this man uh, walks into his business. Uh, and I said to him, Mr. C, I need some land. I want to buy some land so I can take care of my people. That's how I said it. And his words were preached, I got some land. I got 50 acres. It was nearly 60 acres. He did not know it. He said, I sell it to you. I want 25,000. I said, no, sir. We didn't have a dime because we were giving out and helping others. We didn't have one dime. I said, I'll give you 20,000 cash. Didn't have no 20,000. But I knew I had 20,000. He said, preacher, I've got to have 25,000. I said, man, I'll give you 20,000 for it. He said, preacher, I've got to have it. He said, no, well, I can sell you that land for that. I said, I tell you what, let's see it. And I came down here where that man lives now, and I stood in that yard. And I could see the house that we own next door. No, I don't own a damn thing. I don't want it. My life consists more than some dirt and these old buildings that are going to crumble uh, and we don't take care of it. I'm living to live. Uh, I'm living for the kingdom life. You understand? I don't give a damn about owning land. You can. I don't. I don't care about having no private domain for me. Uh, well, what about my children? When it all come down, they're going to have the same thing uh, that all Israelites had. Nothing. Uh, they're going to have to flee like the daughters of Tezion uh, in Ibrahim 11. Uh, they had nothing that they called their own. They had no certain dwelling place. Uh, we're looking for the land uh, of Yerushalayim where Yah is going to guard this nation from the four corners of the earth. Uh, silly old man. Uh, the great benefits of Yah, his great power to afflict, that we may understand the greatness of his power. If we just allow the afflict, the affliction to settle into our hearts, he will lift us up. That's what he wants to do. He wants us as David, as he understood the great hand of Yah, his mastery. That's why he could express his great love for Yah with great, uh, great fervor of heart. That's why he could sing Toda unto Yah, even in his uh, afflict state of mind. Even as he said, I believe what I said, uh, 
And in my haste, I said that all men are liars. The prophets are liars. The messengers are liars. Every man is a liar. You can't trust anyone. We can't talk like that, Yisra'ya. Because you don't concur with that Akka that are halter. You don't do that. You examine yourself by the same measure. How about you examine them? And you will find that you're lacking. And you will find that you need compassion. You had so much it will be seen. You got what it takes it will be seen. You walk in the midst of the daughters of Tisdai and they will know you are virtuous. A woman that is of great strength and great character. You don't have to talk about it. I don't have to talk about strength in my character. I don't have to go places and publicize it. I know that it's seen. You're boasting. No, I make my boast in Yahshua. I don't care where I go. That's a fact. It's a fact. I don't have to boast in it. I don't have to talk about it. It is he that shines. And I let it know. I let it be known as the old folks would say. Sure do. I stand as a warrior. And I stand erect. I stand in his truth. And I don't bow back to no man. You know, mommy, some, something about people. When they have a sense of great comfort, I don't care who they are, they are speaking. They, I don't care if it's women or men. I don't care who they are. When they know that there's a great strength in the character, that they look uh, and they're smiling. Uh, hi. You know, it's not like most men think it's some kind of sensual desire. No, that's what it is. They see character. They see a beauty there. That's what it is. They see a beauty there. They see a beauty. They, they see a persona there. I know that. So I don't think like that. I don't think like that. Not me. I'm not that insecure that I have to think like that. Come on, man. You got a damn gut big as mine, and you think somebody's looking at you. Well, they don't want you. Nobody wants you. That's just a fact. Come on, woman. You look a mess, and you think you've got something that some man, some young boy wants you. He's just mocking you because, hey, how you doing? Kids do stuff to just to see, show you how silly you are. Stop that. Stop it. Hallelujah. Silly old foolish man or immature old woman. You think you've got something. Or something. Stop that old silly woman. You're just so insecure. It's pathetic. You're sad in your damn wicked mind. Come on, old man. Ain't nobody looking at you. Yeah. If anything, you want them to look at you to, to sense the great character and your great beauty and your great strength. Come on, old woman. You, if anything, you want them to look at you and say, look at the beauty of that old woman. Look at her charm. Even in, oh, she's old, but you can tell she's got charm and beauty. Nobody wants you. Why? When there's so many young women out there that's available to men. That's silly. That's a fact. You're just plain silly. Silly. You're not a sugar daddy. They can look and see what you're driving. You're not a sugar daddy. I will. These some silly men today. They're so silly. They're so insecure. They're so unassured themselves. I'm not that. I'm not. Yeah. Dress it right and cover down. Forty inches all around. Soldier of yeah. I'm a soldier. And I know it. I know I'm a soldier. And as they would say, I'm bad to the bone. I know that. I'm not insecure. You can't hardly walk, man. You think some woman looking at you? Stop that. Come on, old woman. Quit that. You should dress yourself in the beauty of Yahshua anyway. I saw you weren't about to look beautiful for Yah. Stop it. There is an utterance here from the wisdom of Baruch, the same one that whereby this Yeremiah wrote and read about. He gives us the great wisdom of Yah in the sense that if we understand what Yah is going to do to the nations, then we better understand what's going to happen to us. Because it began first with us and then to the nation. And he gives us a scenario here in Baruch, 2 Baruch 13.9. I will read this quickly. Baruch says, Therefore, I want you all to hear this. Of all the things we have done, therefore, he says, Yah did not chamal. He did not spare. He did not have pity, compassion. 
He did not have pity on his own sons. He's speaking to the nations. He's writing this to the scattered people of Yah that have immersed themselves in the Gentile culture. He said, Yah did not spare his own sons, but he afflicted them. He did not even spare your shoe, but he afflicted them. He brought them low. He brought distress upon them. Uh, he says, uh, he afflicted them uh, as his enemies, as his oyeb. That's how he afflicted them. That's how he afflicted them as his enemies. Because they had done, they sinned, they transgressed Torah. We did it willingly. We defied the Torah of Yah. We rose up against Yah in the midst of our own indignation. He says, and they sinned against Yah. Therefore, they, who? Israel, Yah, his nation, his people, they were once punished. He said, put it on them one time. Listen now. Why? I did that. And I had to do that. That they may be forgiven. That they may understand forgiveness. It was nothing like my mother spanking my backside and then her forgiveness. Her forgiveness. And then with that forgiveness, there was a closeness. There was an obligation. He said, punish them once that they may understand forgiveness. We don't know what forgiveness is. That's why we don't give a damn. We don't want to forgive no one today. We don't. That they may understand forgiveness. <clears throat> Hear this. But now, he said, I'm talking to you Gentiles. I'm talking to you heathens. But now, you nations, you going, you nations and you tribes, you share that, you branches of a people from that nation, you branch off into other world. He says, but now, you nations and tribes, he says, you are guilty. You have done every kind of sin there is. You're guilty. We're guilty as the nations. He said, you're guilty. He said, because, I want you all to hear this. Because you, because you have trodden, you have beat down, you have disrespected, you have had no compassion. You have trodden down the earth all this time. You have been unkind to the earth. You've been unkind to the environment. You have killed you kill animals for trophies. You kill and destroy and you laugh. You will shoot a magnificent lion and kill it for the head. You will destroy a buffalo. You will destroy a rhinoceros. You will go and hunt a tiger and kill it and you laugh. And you will make mockery of it. And you will mount it and put it in your office. He said, you've trodden down. You've trodden down the species of life. You've trodden down the elements. Don't you know that there are drugs that they make? They can't even find the, 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 the they can't even reproduce the flowers or the trees. They can't even eat them. So it's run it out. You have trodden down the earth at this time. He says, and because you use, you use the creation of Yah unrighteously. You have used everything that Yah has unrighteously. Hear that in Baruch now. He gives us something that is significant with this verse here. I'm not finishing Baruch now, but something that is significant. He said, you have trodden down the earth, you have destroyed. In Gileana, Revelation 11, 8. He says, and the nations 18, Revelation 11, 18. Gileana 11, 18. The time of your judgment. He said, and the nations were angry. And your wrath, he's talking about the Ebra, the great, uncontrollable, fierce anger of Yah. He says, your Ebra, come. And the time of the dead, that they should be judged. And that you should give reward to your servants, the Novi'im, the prophets, uh, and to the Yisraelite Hiroshima, the benefits of Yah unto us. He's going to give us rewards. He said, and them that fear your name, small and great. And I should destroy. I shall shochath, eviscerate, desecrate, bring down to the gates of Sheol of hell. And I shall destroy them 
which are bad, which destroy the earth. He said the nations have. They have robbed it of its ores and its essence for their own damn greed. See, they think that they're going to benefit their families, and for generations, their family is going to be richer. We have the richness of Yah and Yahshua. We have the benefits of Almighty Yah in Yahshua HaMashiach. And then he says, see in Baruch 13, 12, Yah says, for I have always benefited you. And you have always denied the benefits, don't we? He has always benefited us. And we just deny them. I don't believe that. Makes no difference to your detriment. He said, I've always benefited you. I've always caused my gemula that the doors will be open and the riches shall flow upon you. And we have always denied it. Your sure is the gemul, the benefit of this nation, the cleansing, the correction, and we deny your sure. If we say we love him and keep not the mitzvah of Yah, we are liars. We don't obey him. What, 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 what is the summation of Yah's mitzvah? To love him with all and to love your neighbor equally as yourself. How can you, man? Let me ask you a question. How can you, woman? How can you, man? How can you? Man, if you are always antsy and you get upset, so how are you going to love a wife when you can't love a brother? Brother, how are you going to love a brother or wife when you can't love a brother? Woman, how are you going to even know what love is when you're not kindly affectionate to another woman or to another man? How are you going to do that? How are you going to do for a husband when you have no, you, no compassion to do and to assist and to help? You know that that one, just do for the one. Just do, you, you're just that kind. How are you going to do a man like that? You're not going to do it, woman. I don't give a damn what you say. That's why the women must teach the young women. You must teach the daughters of Tizan. You must teach them how to love. You must teach them how to raise your children. And because we have done a piss poor job with our, we don't give a damn about teaching them. We don't give a damn about love. And I don't take nothing back. I don't care who I offend, who I step on, I tend to kick your damn dirty teeth out. That's why we don't do nothing. So how can you, man, if you get so antsy, you get upset about everything, uh, what if a wife say this to you? What if a wife asks you something? You, you got the blow. You would do that with the wife. Uh, you got to get that spirit, that nahash. It is not a demon. It is the demon of your own damn mind and the demon of your will uh, and your own corruption, how you have corrupted yourself. Uh, you don't want to deal with that and you think it's someone else. No, it's you, woman. Uh, it's you, you stupid, silly man. We've forgotten the benefits of y'all. We've got the benefits that y'all put elderly women among us to teach uh, your daughters how to love a man. We've forgotten that y'all put men among us uh, to see the strength and the nurturing and the beauty of a man uh, that we carry ourselves that way. Can I tell you a story? My natural sister called me, and I don't call her. So I did return the call. You know the first thing she said? I am surprised because you don't call me back. That's what she said. She said, you'll take you a month. I said, I know. But why did you call? You called and left two messages. I saw the calls coming in. I didn't answer. I said, what is it? Well, I just, you know, I just want this and that and this and that. And I said, oh, Francis, stop it. But she said something. I'm telling you the story. I don't have to hide nothing. I'm not like you. I don't have time to talk with her about folly. And she knows that. If anything, I rebuke her. She says this to me, quote, her son is in prison. She says this to me, quote, you know, I told him, I don't know how to teach you how to be a man. He says to her, all that I ever wanted in my life was a man. I needed a man in my life. She said, I, I don't know how to teach you. And I was hoping I was able to steer you to others. So she says he asks about you all the time. I don't play with him or no one. Only thing I ever wanted was a man, just a man. She said, that's all he does. He's always talking about you. He's always asking about you. What about you? What about him? What about him? What about him? There's a strength to an ish. He's a man. And that is so deplorable that you don't find many that constitute that today. And I'm not afraid to say it. 
When I, when she first said, I said, what did you say you could teach? He said, she said, oh, no, sir, no, sir. That's how she talks to me. She talks to me. She knows how she, she, knows how she better talk to me. <clears throat> no, sir, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir. I said to him, I can't teach. I can, I can never teach you how to be a man. I can't show you. And his response, all I wanted was a man in my life. You see the ill of women having babies like that? You see the ill of your daughters not allowing the husband to be the head and allow his instructions to be the predominant factor in the life. That's what you need. And see, this boy's in prison 15 years. He's going to spend most of his life in prison. he will be an older man. He'll be in his 40s when he gets out. That's a fact. Because he did not have that sense and the strength of a man. And that's why we as men, when we go, it's one thing about a soldier. If you go to the airport and you see someone in the, in the Marine outfit, you know he's a soldier, don't you? It's not just as much as a Marine outfit. It's the way he walks. So we got to walk this walk and talk it. You men got to quit that bullshit thing and walk this walk and talk it. And I'm not talking about verbally. I'm talking about your actions and your activities. I will come on, man. I'm not afraid of you. You talk that talk, you talk an excellent game, but it doesn't have a damn thing. It has no substance in its own. You got to walk this. They got to see the strength of a man. They got to see the beauty of a man. They got to see the maturity and the maturation of a man. It sat in my heart when she said that. I, I, I felt sorry for the boy. You know, really? He said, all I wanted was a man. Just a man. I know how that was and how that is. As a young lad, never seen a father or even a father figure. And she said this, see, I, I don't hold no secretive agenda. She says to me, you remember Swain? Sure. I used to hang with Swain. She said, you know how old he is? I said, well, he's about 60. She said, no, he's 64 years. I said, he was that old. And she says, that's all he does. He calls and asks about you. She said, we liked him when he was a peewee. I said, you know, they did, they did honest by me. Everything they did, they were honest with me. They didn't defraud me or nothing. They were honest with me. I said, tell me to go to the website. Now, I'm not the same uh, uh, young little bug I was back then. Now, I draw a sword. I tell, give him that. Give him the website. Because I bear a sword then. I bear it folly then. I can say that I, I wasn't a foolish young. I, I'm not boasting in that. I wasn't foolish like the other young men. I wanted to look like a man back then. I dressed like a man. I did. I wanted to act like a man. I wanted to carry myself different. I didn't want to carry myself like young jittybugs and young boys. I walked different. I wanted to look different. I dressed different. Fact. It is the works that we do will speak. It is the volume of our Sadiq that will speak. We cannot forget the benefits of Yah. It all afflict our afflictions. Then Yah refine us. That's why even before we do certain things, he afflict us. And we're so wicked and so callous in our heart. And so uncaring, we don't give a damn. That's his people. I don't care if you listen, if you will ever listen to this. I'm talking to you. Oh, you're talking to me? No, I'm talking to you. You as well. You. You. I don't leave no stony heart unturned. We all got those stony hearts of stones. We need hearts of flesh. That's what you need. Your heart and your cold as hell. It's almost he's giving us a bit of thing. You say, mm, I am wicked. If someone giving you a gift, you give me a gift. You bring those offerings. Come on. And I say, that's it? No, when you put that in my head, I'm happy. That's a frog on a lily pad. <laughs> I don't have to look around. Whoa! Sure, the woo, yeah, you know it. Ah. Ah. Come on, Israel. Yeah. Oh, now, if you're troubled by that because of what you give, you are wicked. That shouldn't even trouble you. That shouldn't even bother you. You, you, you know, that you, you are wicked as hell, man. Woman, you are sick in your damn mind. That shouldn't bother you. If you give from your heart, that means nothing. You know you're giving. You should compare what you give with someone else. Yoshua gave it all. We give everything. That's a sick damn mind. That's pitiful. 
We give unto Yah everything we do, we give unto Yah. We'll recognize. You don't have to be recognized. Don't worry about being recognized. I'm not trying to be recognized for what I'm doing. He will recognize me. If we do it in secret, if he will reward us openly, and if you give it from your heart, he will cause the power of his wisdom to shine in your damn wicked face. Don't play with me now. I don't like me sometimes. But I do love me. I really, I like this man. I love him. Because he's genuine. He's not false. Hallelujah. He's not false. Hallelujah. I'm not fake. I'm not a faker baker. You're boasting and I'm telling you I'm not fake. What I say to you, I live by this. I'm not a hypocrite. I don't go f from here and do one thing in my house uh, and hide like a damn snake. I keep my house this way. I don't care what you say. Hallelujah. So it makes no difference what we give. We give, we do it in love. Don't even worry about being recognized because the day is coming, y'all's going to recognize everything you do. I don't care what you do, you do. I, I will show you something, all right? Hallelujah. Can I read a little farther? I want to read this here quickly, quickly. This is a great cry that David, he pours out his heart unto Yah here in Tehillim 88 verse 1. He pours out the essence of his being. Psalms 88 1. He begins, O oh, Yah, he calls him the sovereign, sovereign master of my Yoshua. He's the master of my salvation. He says, I've cried day and night before you. We don't cry even in the night before him. He says, I've, got, uh, I've opened my heart. I've seen the benefits. I've seen my sins. I've cried day and night before you. He said, let my pala, let my prayer come before you. And he asked the about to incline his ozen ear to his cry. Psalms 88 two. And then he says to Yah, I want to read some verses. He says to Yah, he says, for my nephesh is full of troubles, agony, great turmoil, he says, because my time is near, my life draws closer to Sheol, to death, to the grave. That's what he is saying here in Tehillim 88.3. He says, I am marked, I am counted with them that go down into the pit, into the grave, into Sheol. He says, I am seen. I am visualized, I am perceived as a Geber or a valiant great warrior. And I have no strength. I have no ooze. I have no strength of my own, no strength of my loin. I have no strength to revive me, to refurbish me. I have nothing. He says, although free among the dead like the slain those that have died that lie in the grave whom oh Maria, he has no remembrance no more we're going to have to get this right now I want you to hear this now he says and they are cut off from Yah's hand from the grave you remember him no more. He doesn't remember you. There's nothing you can offer from the grave. Nothing. He says, you have laid me down. Y'all laid him down into the lowest of pits. He said in the whole in darkness whereby I could not even see the vision of your Torah. I could not see the right way. You laid me down into a horrible pit. He says, and in the deeps. Then he says, your Ebra, your Af, your Raf. It lies hard with great devastation upon me. Then he says to Yah, you have afflicted, or you have afflicted me with your waves, your mishba, with this power to break, to bring me low, to shatter. And then he says to Yah, Silla, he says, you have a flicked with waves. What waves? Do we understand what those waves are? 
Those Shaba, Amishba. Can I tell you? He says this even as the Nobi Shambhu Ya writes, second Samuel twenty two five. This what his issue was and the great waves. When you all went down to the Atlantic Ocean back here in November, were the waves roaring? Or oh, they were like they sound like trains. And there's nothing you can do. If, if it catches you and you turn yonder, you finish. I don't care what a swimmer you are. But this is what drowns us. What waves, David? I know we read that we don't try to understand what the waves are. He says here in 2 Samuel 22 5, he says, When the waves of death, when the waves of death, when they come past me, they're going to come past you. He says, and the flood of Belial and men that are wicked, men that are worthless, men that have no love for Yah. See, these are the waves and the floods that fall upon us. Men that are so wicked, men that are so corrupt, women that are so wicked, so corrupt, men that are Belial and men. And when the waves of death, he said, when the floods or when the waves of death, and when this waves of death come past me, and the floods of Belial men made me afraid. What can he do but call upon Yah? He remembered the benefits of Yah. These are the waves that we all, and they're coming upon us. The waves of death and the waves of Belia in men. A man's foe shall be of his own house. My enemy is not some stranger. They are my own house. They are the house of Yisraya. They are my own natural biological association. They are not a strange men. They don't mess with me. Hallelujah. You think that, do we really understand how Yah is going to deal with us? Can I show you a scripture here what it says? I'm going to show you where you want me to, you, you want me to or not. This is what David says. When one is afflicted, it brings about discipline. It does. And so he cries with great assurance of resolve into Helium 119, 65. This is the only way Yah deals with us. We don't deal with each other the way that Yah commands us to. This is what David says. Uh, Psalms 119, 65, 119, 65. He says, you have dealt well with your abbot, your servant. That one that submit, I am your servant. You have dealt well with your servant. Oh yeah, how does he deal with us? According to your Torah, your Dabarim, your promises. That's how he deals with us. That's why he deals with us well according to his word, his Torah. Then he commands Yah, or speaks to Yah. He says, Yah, teach me tough mishpatim. We don't want to know the tough judgments of Yah. Teach me your tough judgments and knowledge da'at. For I have believed your mitzvah. I believe what you commanded. He said, before I was afflicted. Before my mind was distressed, before the afflictions of the great sufferings of depression and oppression had captivated me, uh, he said, I went, uh, I we began to shagha, I erred, I sinned, uh, I became estranged from you. I went my way before I was ever afflicted. I began to walk in my own intuition, my own mind, my own way. He says, but now. Because I was afflicted, but now, as old folks will say, but now, I said, no, but now, I like that. That's where they will say that, mama. Yes, ma. You almost got it like Yosef, yes, sir. We out there working, I would say, come on, man, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get it done. Yes, sir. We get it done. No doubt about it. Yes, sir. He said, before, before I was afflicted, before I was humble and brought low to see the depths of my own depravity, he said, I went, uh, I began to sin. I went astray. He said, but now. I'm glad for that, but now. But now. I have been afflicted, but now. I have suffered immensely, but now. I have been torn, but now, but now I have kept your word. Now I know what to do, Yah. I know exactly what to do, Yah. 
I know that before I was afflicted, I know that I had become arrogant. I know I have gone astray. But now, as they would say, but now he brought me through, honey. I also didn't know which way to go, but now I'm so good. But now I can sing, not sing, but sing. But now, but now, but now I can keep it. I can shama, I can guard it. I can hold it tight in my mind. I can embrace it. I can love it. Yeah, but now, but now I've kept. I'm going to keep this Torah. Because that is the power that keeps me. But now. I have kept your word. Not tomorrow, but now is the acceptable time of God. But now. I was reading this comment. This woman says, Preacher, you are a mess. You are sick. You are mean. I was reading it yesterday. You, been, you must have been molested as a child by some adult man. I said, this one. That must be what she's doing. People are sick in their minds. You are so full of anger. You need the Holy Ghost. Damn your Holy Ghost. Damn the Holy Ghost. Ye did the Holy Ghost. Damn the Holy Ghost lie. Damn it. Damn the Holy lie. Damn it. I was ain't taking that back. She said, you are a sad man. You think I let old crazy looking woman, a fat heifer. I said that way. That's not to offend anyone. But this fat heifer. Nasty looking thing. You think I let her correct me? I'm a man. I'm a strong man. You think let yes. She says to me, You are full of anger. And your wife be there. 37, 38 years, huh? I hit that back pretty hard now. I make it sing. I still can make it sing. I can bring fire from that thing. I get in that gym, when I hit it, it makes it hollow. Listen, I still got some power to that. And I beat my wife up. She's smaller than what she is now back then. And I could have knocked her head off. I don't want to mess up her face. Well, I want to mess up her pretty face. I want to beat up with verbiage and call her dirty this and you no good piece of... No, when I come... No, 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 no. You just... Oh, oh. Mm -mm, baby girl. We get that done. No, don't be quiet. Uh-uh. We ain't going that way. You're going to listen to me. Period. True, true, true. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. And then when you're sweet and kind, then I'll hear your cries. Ah. Then we go to Walmart. She said, your wife beat her. Huh? I don't know. She lies for me. You know where a lie is going. Beat my. I was too much of a coward to do that. It takes a coward to be this way. He's not even a coward. Fat. Ping, ping, boom. I couldn't do that. She couldn't handle me. I hit too hard. All right. I throw a mean punch. Still can. I still can stroke it hard. You both, no, I can stroke harder than you. And I beat those rocks. I can hit you. Don't, you don't know how to throw that punch right. I'll tell you what. It's right enough. I saw Sarah out there. She was hitting that bag. She, I said, no, no, you got to get your hands ready. She was punching that thing. But she was boom, boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. She said, your wife be the child molester. That's what she called me. The woman. That's how sick people are. That's how they do. They do people like that. People, you will do people like that. When you can tell me you're wrong, you can tell me my wrong, all right? See, y'all tells me my wrong because he has no wrong in him. Yeah. So you can't tell me my wrong. I won't even listen to a silly woman tell me. He says, but now I have kept your Torah. Why? Because what Yah does to us, He's justified. Everything He does is just. Everything He does. He doesn't make any mistakes at all. Why, why, why are we afflicted? 
Is that the reason why we afflict? Does he cause his word to afflict us? Sure he does. Can I show you one example of why we are afflict? He says, that we says in the 71, 71st verse of the same chapter of Tehillim, Psalms 119, 71. How many of you all would say this? It is tough for me that I have been afflict. How many of you all believe that? Can I, my friend? How many of us believe that? Have you ever heard anyone say that? We are flat out hypocrites, aren't we? None. You've never said that. Here this man said it was excellent, it was tough for me, that I was afflicted. We will say, well, something's going to happen to her, him, because they did that. We'll say that, won't we? Yeah. He said, it was tough for me that I have been afflicted. Why? That I may learn. We haven't learned a damn thing. We've learned how to lie, to be evil, and to do evil, that I may learn your hook. I may learn your statutes and your ordinance. I may learn your wisdom. See, that's why I say why. Because you can sit down in the Torah, you can learn and you can read uh, and you can study and you can bear the book open uh, in your meditation. You can lay there in bed uh, or whatever the circumstance, your mind uh, be enthralled by every kind of demonic power that's trying to, to assess your mind, your weakness to enter in, to overpower you that Nahash stands up uh, and overrides the Torah of Yah. He said it was a tough thing that I was afflicted. I could just concentrate on Yah. That, 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 that labor in the care of all things, uh, they, they, it did not even cease to exist to me. Uh, we won't say that. Uh, if someone's a flake, we will say, well, they did wrong. That's the first thing we say. Well, tell me why in hell you're not uh, a flake. You're a wicked man. You're a Jezebel of a woman. Uh, you're cowardly of a man. Uh, you're a busybody of a woman in everyone's damn affairs. Uh, and your house ain't worth a damn. It's not even uh, set in order. My friends, if you all hear me use the word damn, don't, don't. I, I'm not cussing, okay? I, it's just an expression. I may use it as a reflective verb or pronoun. I, I, but don't, don't get upset, okay? Just don't get upset with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was tough that I was afflicted. Yeah, that's what I said, afflicted. It was tough that y'all afflict me. It's right that he afflict you. That you may learn the Torah, you may learn the hook of Yah. You're on your bed, man, learn what the Torah says. Don't waste your time sitting there thinking about something to eat, doing nothing. Woman, you sit there and read the book to your husband, read the book to your wife, man. Now, I know you all don't like me, but that's all right. I don't mind not being liked. So what? We don't love Yah, so what? So what if you don't love Yisra'ya? It was tough. That I was afflicted. It was tough. He said that I may lamad, I may be taught the hook, that which Yah prescribed, that's what He instructed us, and I may learn that. That it may become innate, it may become a part of me. It may be me, I, I may be that. It's a sad thing. I want to tell all you, Akim, especially you men, you all, we got a weakness. We don't want to esteem others. If, if you're not esteemed, you feel like, well, why didn't esteem me? No, we should always esteem others more highly than ourselves. I don't have no problem doing that. I'm not like men that got to always challenge someone because someone knows more. I don't give a damn if you know more me. Because when you die, if you don't share it, you don't open up to others, it goes right down to the damn grave with you. So it doesn't make any difference how much you know. There are men that are fitted because some know, someone knows more than them. They can articulate. They have a better skill set and ability. We didn't lift me up. Then you lift up someone then. You know that you don't lift up no one because you want to be lifted up. Same thing with you daughters of Tizayon. I rejoice in the strength of other Achim. I bless them. That's why I say to all of y'all, if that group comes, I don't want y'all trying to teach them nothing. Leave that to Zachin and me. We got that. I don't want you to teach them nothing. Let your light so shine that they may see your Yisra'ya. Let your light shine that they may see the works of Yah. That's all you need. And woman, if you are so right, then let your light shine that others may see the tough works of Yah in you and they may honor Yah because of you. Yeah. 
I want to close in a moment because I got things. I want to just one or two things. I, I mean, I've finished this, but that's all right. We're not deceived. We're going to reap it now, Yisraya. David, when he did what he did to Uriah, his captain of men. What you do unto Yisraya is coming back on you. I don't know what happened to my spider friend. I look for him every Shabbat. And he just hasn't been coming out. Hallelujah. David gives us a great wisdom here in Tehillim 119. Same chapter, drop down to verse 75. He says to Yah, I know, Ayada, O Yah, that your judgments are just. Do we believe the judgments of Yah are just? His judgments are just. They are, they are sadiq. They are straight. Yosha, they are straight. We know that your judgments are just. And that you, listen now, you, Yah, to Helium 119.75, he said that you in faithfulness, you have afflicted me. You tell me, Yah, in his faithfulness, why, that I may learn his way? That he is faithful that has afflicted me? He said, let I beseech you, I pray you, he said, if nothing is your steadfast love kindness, he said, let that be for my nocha, my comfort, your kindness. You afflict, you have afflicted that. Nah, you have afflicted me with great affliction. And I ask for your naham, your kindness. I'm afflicted to comfort me. Yeah? He says, according to your word, to your servant. I am your servant, so let your word be according to that. We are the body of Yeshua. We're his body. Yah and his faithfulness afflict. We need to learn the ways of Yah. We don't, we don't know the ways of Yah. We don't even know Torah. We don't even know the Kitve. That's just honest. Stop it. We don't really know it. That's why so many are deceived. When a man speaks with honesty, we think he's trying to deceive us. For what? Hell, you don't have anything. For what? Money? How got to be a fool to try to deceive you for the money to, for me to lord over you? Hell, you do enough. You, 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 you are Billy Yael. You, you do a job well enough lording over you. You're silly. Nobody ain't going to tell me that I'm a man. You're not a man. Because men go to work every day and they take care of their children. People tell them all the time. Yes, sir, we, we'll take it. You should be out. Roll up. Don't mess with the Lord. Up. Yes, sir. We 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 we, we we'll straighten that up when we finish. That, that's like you don't say. Well, hold up, man. Hold up, player. Uh uh. I'm telling the truth. Ah, I'm so glad you all do it that way. Yes, sir. We get it done. Oh, no problem. Yes, sir. We we apologize. We we. I tell you what, my friend. When we finish, you won't even know we've been there. How about that? Well, you all didn't know what you said. Nobody tells me nothing. You boy. He's a boy. He doesn't want nobody to tell him. You want to get out of here? Ah! He's not with the little gals. He sees me. He wants to come to me. Well, he wants to come to get down. I said, no, nah, boy, you don't come to me and get down. Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, you, you, no, no, no. I'm going to hug him. I'm going to kiss him. I'm kiss him. Then he get to falling back and crying and moving. And I said, get this little knucklehead. And then as soon as he gets him, he, he wants to come back. I said, okay, now I, I, I'll break it. Now don't worry about it. Huh? See, he doesn't want anyone to control him or tell him anything. And that's the way we are. We're little boys. We don't want him to tell us nothing. That's why men can work together. One man doesn't want another man to tell him nothing. You daughters can work together. You don't want them to tell you nothing. Let me close from here. I give you a consolation above all things here. There is more, but at some other time, okay? I want to close him because I've got a few announcements. It says here in Yeshaya, Suffering. Isaiah, you know this. Isaiah 53, verse 4. It tells us that surely Yoshua Hamashiach, he has bronze, he has Nasa, he has bared up, he has carried, 
it has been a part of him. He has taken it upon ourselves. He has runs our holy, our sickness, our sickness, and our afflict, our, our great suffering. And he has carried our makhob, the great sorrows of our heart, those that are physical and mental pains that distracts us. And although he did that, he did that for us, didn't he? It says, yet we did not hashab. We did not esteem him. What does that esteem mean? We could not co compute his value and what he meant. That's why we don't think about Yahshua. He has no value to us. We don't even esteem him. We don't even walk in our daily life and bless Yah for Yahshua. We don't even miss, we, we let anger rest in our bosom instead of the beauty of his name. And yet he did all that the benefits of Yah, the Gemul, and we don't even esteem him. He's talking to us here. And we don't even esteem him. He said, and not only that, he was naga, he was beaten and bruised. He was stricken. He was naga, he was smitten. He was smitten and bruised of Yah. And he was afflicted. You tell me the one that redeemed us. And he was afflicted by Yah. And he was afflicted. That's what it says. And he was afflicted. And we don't remember him. Something is sick in our psyche. Something gets wrong in our hearts and our minds. We don't even esteem your sure how much is something. It's drastically wrong with us. He was afflicted. Smitten of Yah. And then it is compound afflict. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He suffered the bruises for our ovine, our iniquities. He was chastised that we may walk in the covenant of Shalom with Yah. All of that was upon him and he could not miss a beat or a letter at all. And it says by his stripes we are restored. We are Rafa, we are restored back to a normal man. What a man, esteem your sure. He, he comes to the strength of a man. He's restored. I don't care what happened today, uh, but then we, he esteemed him. He was reminded of him. Uh, he is restored, Yisraya. He is brought back uh, to the strength of a man. And we as a nation, all of us uh, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own ways. You have turned to your own ways. That's why what we say, we believe. That all men are liars. No one loves me. You don't even know how to love. You must show yourself to be friendly. To have friends. Hear this. And Yahweh has laid, put upon him, the iniquity of us all. So who... Is without iniquity. He has laid the iniquity of us all upon him. We don't think about Yahshua. That's why we don't esteem him. Don't you understand? He was oppressed. And he was afflicted. Twice that word is used there. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet. He opened not his mouth. We open our damn theft. And the low shang, The tongue of our wicked mouth. That stinks. With our own spittle. He did not even open his mouth. Why? Because he knew what was laid upon him. Me. Maybe not you, but I was. You were not, but I was. Your iniquity wasn't, but mine was. And he couldn't open his mouth. He opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep to a shield. As one that is dumb. And he opened not. His mouth. He didn't even open his mouth. We open our mouths, don't we? He opened out his mouth. There was nothing that he said. I'm going to close with this last verse here because I want to make a couple of announcements. I'm not going to even tell you where it's at. I'm going to read it. The question is asked for the sovereign Yah. The statement is implied, will not cast off forever 
his people. He won't cast us off. But though he calls grief, Chaga, he calls us grief. But though he calls grief, yet will he have compassion, Raham. He will have compassion according to the multitude of his steadfast love kindness. I'm so glad of that. Hear this. Yod does not afflict with pleasure willingly. It's not a pleasure for him to do that. Neither does he grieve the children of men. He doesn't afflict us willingly. He doesn't grieve us, Yisrael. All of that was bared upon Yahshua. That's why we must esteem him. We must esteem him. We must kara, we must esteem him. And if we don't, woe unto us. We must esteem him. We must. He has not afflicted us willingly. Everything that has happened unto us, it is because of our wicked nature, our sin. You can't love Yah without loving your neighbor. You can't be kindly affectionate. You got to learn how to be kind. And that kindness must have affection. We have not learned how to be affection, affectionate. And that's a fact. May the riches of Yah rest upon his nation, his people scattered abroad. You that have joined us for the live broadcast, for the hearing of this teaching today. We greet you all in Yeshua's mighty name. May his strength rest upon you all. Do send a gift to help us. We need the funds, all right? We need the finance. We need you to help us. You've been blessed. You've been enriched. And I know this simple teaching was a great rich blessing to you all that were listening. Hallelujah. That's righteous there. You have rock you all in Yeshua's name. Let's stand to our feet. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you get upset with me. I don't care. Hallelujah. Let us turn toward Yerushalayim. and we pray that this teaching cut you to the core. Hallelujah. In all things we do, Barak, you in Yeshua's name, our Abba, guide us, give us rest and comfort, and touch, touch your people, go with us all in Yeshua's name. We do, Barak, you for all things, we told you for everything that you grant unto us, your wisdom, your knowledge. Take us and guide us this day and give us all rest, Shafat and Yeshua, take everyone home safely, bless the hearers today of your Torah. We pray for the shalom of Yerushalayim as we turn to your city in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.